what is the data block? Now, because the data block is the smallest unit inside the database storage, the logical structures, an Oracle block is almost bigger than, not almost, it is always bigger than the operating system blocks. The default size of a data block is 8 KB. An Oracle data block is like, it will contain 8 KB, which means 1, 1 KB OS level blocks. If you can see on the right hand side, this diagram or this picture depicts how Oracle data block is related to operating system blocks. Always remember the operating system blocks are smaller than the database blocks. And of course, this is all logical. This resides inside the database. So how does it help Oracle to fetch the data very fast? The Oracle data block will store the information of the OS level data blocks where the data is stored. So when Oracle needs something, Oracle will call this data block and this data block internally has the details of the OS level physical storage details where the data is stored on the OS level hard disk. And that's how it becomes easy for Oracle to get 8 KB data at one shot. Of course, we have an option to increase this uh, value inside the database. But remember, on a general note, everyone goes with 8 KB data blocks. It depends on the environment to environment. For example, if there is a database whose average row length is above 8 KB, then definitely you, go, you can go for bigger data blocks. And also, if the average row length is less than 8 KB, like 4 KB, then it's better to have 4 KB blocks because every time Oracle will have an overhead to uh, take out 8 KB blocks and the average row length is only 4 KB. So you are wasting the next 4 KB which is coming up by default. It depends. This all again decided by the uh, database architect who would interact with the client and decide on the database structure. So when the database is created for the first time, you will decide or the database architect will decide upon the size of the data blocks. Remember, once the data block size is fixed, you cannot change it later. You will have to either recreate the entire database by performing an export import or something like that. But normally, once you create a database with the fixed size of the data block, you cannot change it. So that's about the size of the Oracle data block. Remember, Oracle data block is always bigger than the operating system blocks. Now, internal format of the block. What exactly is there in the block or the Oracle data block? In the Oracle data block, we have a data block header. So in this data block header, it will store the information about the uh, data block, what all data it contains, and of course, it will also contain the latest SCN numbers. So these SCN numbers are important to define the last updated values or when was the data block updated last. So it's all about having the latest or the updated SCN on the data block headers because it will help Oracle database to open it very consistently. So the data block header will contain details about the data block. And below the Oracle data block header, we have table directory. Now this is the location, this area, the black one. It has the details like what all tables whose data is stored in this data block. Next is row directory. That's like uh, the list of all the rows which are stored in this data block. So this row directory will not store the row data. It will store the row IDs. So it becomes easy for Oracle to watch through the row IDs. Okay, this row ID resides over here. Great. And then it picks up the data from this gray area. Next is this free space, which is this white space in the data block. This free space is the one which gets filled when more and more data will come into the data block. And finally, the row data, actual data which you insert in a row will reside under row data. 
the last line as I have told earlier data block the Oracle data block is never equal to the OS level blocks OS level blocks are much smaller than the Oracle data block next is inside the data block so we have just talked about the data block but now we are getting inside the data block how the rows are placed so the row format inside the data block if you see this one we have a data block and this is one single row or row piece in a data block. This is where the actual data of the row is placed. Remember in Oracle, everything will have a header. Even the row which is stored over here will have a row header and the column data, the exact data of the column. And remember, the column data will be stored in the same order how you have created the table. So when you created the table, it started with serial number, name, address. Even the row data will be stored in the same format as serial number, name, and address. So every row has its own format like data block format. Every row in this data block, it will have its own format. When we say about the format, it's the way the row is stored in the data block. Row header stores details about the row. Remember, as I was telling, even your data block will store the row details. It will have the list of all the rows which are stored in the data block by row ID. That is how it stores. So it becomes easy for Oracle to go and read the row directory. And from the row directory, it will pick up, okay, this row ID resides in this block. And then from that row ID, it will refer to the row header in which we have the row ID. Can you see? Row ID of chain row pieces, if any. We have first of all row overhead, number of columns, cluster key ID, row ID of chain row pieces, if any, even if it is not there, you will have the default row ID. Then you will have the column length and finally you have the column value. When we say the column value, it's like the exact value which you insert. For example, the name, the address, whatever you put in, that's the user data which is placed over there. Finally, as I told you, column data is stored in the same order how you create the table while giving or issuing the create table command. There is no change in that. Now you might have a question like, when I insert the data, I might leave some columns blank even if you leave the columns blank still it will be stored in the column format only or in the column order only how you created but those column data will be null so that is how the rows are stored inside a single data block now you might also have a question how many rows or how the rows are stored when it is compared to a table because I have a table and I just keep on adding the columns, then how the data is stored or how the rows are inserted in the data block. Let us look at that example. First of all, the simplest thing is, remember, when we have a data block, we can max insert 8 KB data. When you have a row, which is below 8 KB, let us take we have a row whose average length is 4 KB. So definitely we can make out like, okay, we can have two 4, 4 KB rows inserted into one data block. Again, when next time we have the 4 KB coming in, a new data block will be there and the data will be inserted over there. Okay, I'm just giving a general example. Of course, definitely in each every data block, we have some of the free space also for future growth. But for now, let's skip it. Okay, this is like one example where 4KB row is coming. What happens when a bigger row will come? Like 6KB. When this type of rows are coming in, we have the 6KB filled in. For the next row, that 6KB, the 2KB will be placed in this, in this block and the remaining 4KB will be placed over here. And that's how it continues. Again, 6KB row is coming. We still have how much 4KB over here. And in the next data block, 2KB will be allocated. 
again 6 KB is coming and that's how it continues by allocating the space in different data blocks. Now the question is what if the data is above 8 KB? It's simple. The same way how 6 KB blocks are placed, if the data is of 10 KB, it will allocate one block for 8 KB and then it will utilize 2 KB from another block. Which means, let us assume when you query the table, what happens? The output of your query is only single row or one row. So this 4 KB, the single row which is residing into this block, this entire block will be pulled into the memory. So when the block is pulled into the memory, you are having one row which is the result plus you have one more row which is the garbage you don't need. So this filtering is done in SGA. I'm, I'm sorry, this is done in PGA. The private global area, that's the area where the filtering of the data blocks is done and only the data which is requested by the user will be given to the user. This is example for 4KB block. Let us assume you are calling a row or the output of your query is a 6KB row. What happens? Of course, in this, in this case also, one block will be copied to the memory and every block might have at least 2KB or depending on the other different storage, it might have 2KB or 4 or 6KB as the garbage. I'm talking about the garbage because see, in this one, if this is the row, then you have 6KB plus 4KB, 10KB garbage. And let's take the row that you're calling is this one. You have 4KB plus again 6KB. Again, you have 10KB garbage in your output. So when you copy or when you call these rows in this one, you need to identify like, okay, how much garbage is also coming with every query. That is like this all is the job of a database architect. Next, when you call a 10 KB block into the memory or when you query a table where the average row length is 10 KB, remember you have one 8 KB block plus 2 KB. With all this, you are also getting 6 KB garbage. And this is how you define the average length depending on how much garbage will come every time when user is querying. Now this garbage is becoming an overhead or it becomes an overhead onto the Oracle because every time when you are querying, the extra data is coming which has to be filtered and you will have the overhead on the PGA where the filtering is done. PGA is the one which is responsible for removing the garbage and give the only requested data to the user because see whenever you query the table you don't query everything or you don't query the entire table okay even if you're querying the entire table it is not stored in exact chunks of data blocks if it is stored in exact chunks of data block well and good it will come up directly but if it is not stored in exact chunks of block or your table data is not exactly 8 KB then it becomes an overhead to copy all the blocks into the memory, then filter the garbage and give it to the user. This is about the row format and how the data is stored in the data blocks. Next, inside a data block, we'll take an example. We have the data block. Okay, even before getting into the data block, we need to understand about one data type which is very important in Oracle that is varchar varchar2 this data type has a special characteristics it says that let's take if you define a column name as varchar220 every time I insert a value under the name column let's take under name the first row I'm inserting a name as Ravi. So these are how many characters? 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm still left with 16 characters, which I can insert, or the max I can insert is 20. So I have left with 16 characters. With varchar 2 what Oracle does is, these 16 characters, or the unused 
space in this name field will be utilized somewhere else. So this can still be used. It won't reserve the space for the first row or the name which we have inserted in the first row. That is the speciality of this one and that's how the Oracle will optimize the space. Let us assume you are using char. Now char is also another data type. If we define the name column as char 20, if I insert Ravi, that's the name. So the 16 characters which are left over these 16 characters will still be shown as used which means any row which is coming the 20 characters will be reserved irrespective you use it use them or not and that's how the char data type is different from the varchar and in varchar the specialty is it can be used somewhere else but there is a problem with varchar too i won't say a problem it might be a requirement in future. Let's take in future the name column is changed to full name. When you change the name column to full name, you need to include the complete name of all the employees. What I'll do is I'll update this column to Ravi and Kishore. This is the complete name, which means now how many characters are being used? One, two, three, four. I'll count the space 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm left with still 8 characters in the field. Good. Now this increment, how will you manage this one in a data block? This is the reason what happens. Every data block will not be filled 100%. Always remember. It will be filled only 80% and 20% of the space will be still reserved for future updates because if you update any field you need to accommodate it over here only right otherwise this will become row chaining now what is row chaining you have half row over here then oracle will allocate one more data block there will be a pointer this pointer will point that okay half data is there in this data block so you will have the block ID in the header. The block ID will be stored along with the half row in the block one. Now you must keep yourself away from row chaining because this is again a performance hit. It's very simple uh, looking at the block one that okay, we have the half row over here. We have the data block and this uh, data block half row is on some other block that is block two, but at disk level like this is the hard disk you never know one block will be over here one block will be over here into different uh, sectors then it will become it's always an overhead for your hard disk to search the another or the second block it is not guaranteed that the second block will be side by side this will never happen and that's why row chaining should be always avoided and that's the reason what oracle does because oracle is intelligent they didn't allow the Oracle database to utilize the 100% inside a block. 20% is kept reserved for future updates or deletes or whatever you do inside the row which is stored in the block. Okay, the 20% is like minimum reserved. Let's take what if you have more data because not always you will have updates which is only occupying the 20% space or maybe less than 20% space. In that case, of course, you will have this row chaining, but row chaining can be removed once you reformat or once you optimize the fragmentation inside the database. Now that is something we will be looking at in our performance tuning topic. So for now, just remember, Oracle database will have always 20% free space inside every data block to accommodate the future updates of the rows which are placed inside the data block. This 20% free space is only for the updates which will happen to the rows inside the block. This will never be used for any insertion or the future insertion. Insertion, And when the update happens inside any of the row inside this block, it will first fill this 20% space and then it moves to the another block.